The Kansas City Chiefs make a surprising move. So we're gonna be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video, and if you want more Kansas City Chiefs news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is Chiefs make big move at running back ahead of Week 7 game. The Kansas City Chiefs enjoyed their bye in Week 6. They have been hammered with a bunch of injuries through the first month of the season, but they are still 5-0. The Chiefs have lost Marcus Brown, Rashi, Rice, and Isaiah Pacheco, to various injuries. That led to Kansas City bringing Kareem Hunt back into the fold. Hunt has been effective in his two games with the Chiefs, but the fans will love the latest update regarding the backfield. Per the NFL's official transactions, the Chiefs have added running back Clyde Edwards-Hilaire back to the 53-man roster. Edwards-Hilaire was on the non-football injury list after he revealed that he was dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder during the summer. He had some physical effects that included nausea and vomiting. With some time away from the team, the 25-year-old is ready to rejoin the group. With Pacheco still on IR, the LSU product has a pathway to contribute to the offense. In 48 career games with the Chiefs, Edwards Hilaire has totaled 1,845 rushing yards, 765 receiving yards, and 19 total touchdowns. The Chiefs will likely ease Edwards Hillary back into action, but getting him back onto the 53-man roster is a massive boost for the offense. Kansas City still needs to add another playmaker at wide receiver, but getting a familiar face back onto the active roster will only benefit the team. On Monday, head coach Andy Reid discussed whether the Kansas City Chiefs would explore a move in the trade market at the wide receiver position. Wide receivers Rashi Rice and Marquise Brown are expected to miss months, if not the rest of the season and postseason, due to their injuries. On Tuesday, a veteran pass catcher became available on the trade market after a major swap was finalized in the league. The Las Vegas Raiders agreed to ship Devontae Adams to the New York Jets. The Jets now have Adams, Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, and Mike Williams on their roster. Per a Tuesday report by Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk, New York is shopping Williams before the trade deadline on November 5th. And the odd man out, not surprisingly, will be Mike Williams, Florio wrote. Per a league source, the Jets will attempt to trade the veteran wideout who was signed in the offseason to a one-year deal. The Jets signed Williams to a one-year contract worth $10 million in free agency this March. The former 2017 first-round pick has appeared in six games and started two for the Jets. He's caught 10 passes for 145 with New York. In the 30-year-old pass catcher's eight-year NFL career, Williams has 319 receptions for 4,951 yards and 34 touchdowns. Those are solid stats that would pair well with Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. It remains to be seen if the Chiefs will pursue a trade with an AFC team fighting for a spot in the playoffs. The second story is how Kareem Hunt went from free agent to Chiefs powerhouse. While the Kansas City Chiefs were going through training camp this summer, Kareem Hunt went through a workout routine on his own hundreds of miles away. Hunt met his former track coach, Matt Luck, four times a week at Willoughby South High School outside of Cleveland. They would set up cones representing defenders at various spots on the football field and run plays, Luck as the quarterback and handing off or throwing to Hunt, the running back. He would make reads on the cones, as he would with defenders in a real game, and then cuts based on their positions, with an NFL limit of 40 seconds in between plays. Hunt's goal was not merely to get a job with an NFL team, like the Chiefs, but to be ready to have an immediate impact once he did. He did things that he would do in a game so that when he did get into camp and he makes that movement, his body is used to it, Luck said. Based on Hunt's first two games with the Chiefs, who signed him after losing starting running back Isaiah Pacheco to a broken leg, those workouts were a success. Hunt was the Chiefs' leading rusher with 69 yards in their Week 4 win over the Los Angeles Chargers, 
then had his first 100-yard game since 2020 and scored a touchdown in Monday night's victory over the New Orleans Saints. It was more than the Chiefs could have expected from Hunt, who hadn't played in a game or practiced with teammates in eight months before arriving in Kansas City. Hunt acknowledged it was more than he expected from himself. I guess it's always a part of you after not playing for a while and then coming back and playing, wondering, just how are you going to play, Hunt said. So I just went out there and I continued to just be myself. I know what I'm good at doing and some of my weaknesses. Hunt started his NFL career in Kansas City, drafted by the Chiefs with the 86th pick in the third round of the 2017 draft. He led the NFL in rushing as a rookie in 2017 and was having another big season in 2018, but was released in November of that year after a video surfaced showing Hunt shoving and kicking a woman outside of his Cleveland residence. No charges were filed against Hunt, but he was placed on the commissioner exempt list and suspended by the NFL for the first eight games of the 2019 season. In 2019, his hometown Cleveland Browns signed him and he played five seasons with them. He became a free agent after the 2023 season, so the Chiefs were more hopeful than certain about how Hunt would fit in when they signed him to the practice squad in September. Hunt has not only been effective as a runner, but has caught three passes and done a solid job in pass protection. To come into an offense, I know it's an offense he'd been in, but an offense he hadn't played in years, and to be able to run the football hard, get well-earned yards, and catch the ball out of the backfield, it was good to see, quarterback Patrick Mahomes said. He's always been a guy that runs tough. He's hard to tackle, and you can see that. He's going to make sure he finishes every single run and falls forward. He'll get more and more comfortable as the year goes on and have a role in our offense. Although his goal while working out this summer was to get a job with any NFL team, Luck said Hunt had a particular favorite in mind. But the Chiefs, at the time, appeared set with Pacheco, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, and rookie Carson Steele. They even added another veteran, Samaje Perrine, at the conclusion of training camp. But Pacheco's injury left a void the Chiefs believed they couldn't fill with the players on the roster alone. That was a door that he always kept open if the situation was right, Luck said. He recognized why they let him go, and he was upset about it. But he realized that was all on him. It was always a fond place for him. Over the summer, we even talked about, hey, if this happened, would you go back? And he said, yes. The third story is Kansas City Chiefs, great Jamal Charles, on why he's not concerned about team after Rashi Rice, Isaiah Pacheco injuries. Kansas City Chiefs running back Jamal Charles knows a thing or two about what it's like to be one of the best players on a playoff team. The former 37-year-old running back was one of the top players in the first half of the 2010s, clinching three All-Pro selections and four Pro Bowl berths. Charles led the NFL in rushing touchdowns in 2013 and still ranks as the league's all-time leader in rushing average. Charles suffered a torn ACL in Week 5 of the 2015 season, missing the remainder of the year. However, despite Kansas City starting 1-5, they bounced back to finish the year 11-5 and advanced as far as the divisional round of the playoffs. It feels somewhat similar to this season, where the Chiefs have suffered a rash of injuries, including a season-ending injury to leading receiver Rashi Rice, a potential season-ending ailment for Marquise Brown, and a fractured fibula injury that could keep Isaiah Pacheco sidelined for the remainder of the season. Despite those injuries, Kansas City is still one of two remaining teams who are undefeated at 5-0. No, I feel like when I was a big part of the team, I got hurt and we were like 1-5, to five, says Charles in a one-on-one -on -one interview. And they ended up coming back and winning 11 games. It's next man up. With Andy Reid there, the offense doesn't revolve around one person. He can put anybody in that offense, and it sets you up for success. Charles has a point, considering the Chiefs had even less talent on offense last season, with Patrick Mahomes going through his worst statistical year as a result of the decline in supporting cast. Mahomes had career lows with 
27 touchdowns, and 7.0 yards per attempt while throwing a career-high 14 interceptions. Despite the Chiefs finishing with an 11-5 record, the lowest wins total of the Mahomes era, Kansas City still won their second consecutive Super Bowl. That was with Rice as the leading wide receiver at 79 catches for 938 yards and seven touchdowns. That's not even mentioning how the Chiefs have won back-to-back -back Super Bowls following the departure of eight-time Pro Bowler and six-time All-Pro selection Tyreek Hill. The Chiefs have managed to do this with Rice as their leading wide receiver in 2023 and Juju Smith-Schuster in 2022 as their leading wideouts. This time around, the Chiefs are better equipped to handle the loss of two of their top receivers considering they have first-round pick Xavier Worthy on the roster.